hello guys and welcome to a new video so what is a CPU bottleneck a CPU bottleneck is when a CPU is incapable of keeping up with other hardware generally the graphics card insert in a certain task like games here you will experience a bar FPS slowdowns or in worst case scenarios a stuttering and unplayable gaming experience unlike with a GPU where you can increase the FPS by lowering the image settings or resolution for the most part there isn't a way to reduce the CPU bottleneck so, some in game settings like shadows, lighting, view distance or other game specific options can help reduce CPU strain but only on an extent this is why it is important that you pick the right CPU for the games you wish to play. Finding a bottleneck in your PC is easy. All you need to do is monitor your CPU and GPU usage. From that you can infer, infer if you have a bottleneck in your system. For instance, here we are enabling the LSS and because I'm using balance, not quality, my CPU can't keep up with the GPU. This is why you can see that the GPU is around, utilization is around 90% more or less. So how can we find a bottleneck? Finding a bottleneck in your PC is easy. All you need to do is monitor your CPU and GPU usage, and from that you can infer if you have a bottleneck in your system. I recommend downloading MSI Afterburner. With MSI Afterburner, you can install Inverter Statistics and set on screen display to show graphs for CPU and GPU usage. Here we can see Troy Total War running on 1080p with low settings. This is an older game and because of that my CPU can push the graphics card to its limits. GPU utilization is good and with these frame rates we could increase the graphics settings to enjoy the game with better visuals. But this is not the point of the video. What I want to demonstrate here is that when lowering the resolution and the graphics usually we have an increase in, in frame rates. But this is to an extent. 1080p or 1920 by 1080 is a resolution that most players use for competitive gaming. Modern day CPUs can push graphic cards to achieve really good frame rate at this resolution with graphic settings set to low. At this resolution, I would recommend for single player games to max out the graphic settings because we pay good money for an 80 series card and we expect it to deliver. A 3080, even a 10 gigabyte version can push frame rates above 100 FPS even in modern games. And maxing out settings usually doesn't create a CPU bottleneck at 1080p or above. We usually want to have the GPU utilization between 97 and 100 percent and the CPU must be under 90, but less than 80 percent is recommended. When the CPU utilization is around 100%, we will experience stutters, low frame rates, so a bad experience overall. And now we will lower the resolution and see what will happen. So, low resolution, max settings. Now let's look at the CPU utilization here. Also keep in mind that I'm actually recording and because of this the CPU utilization is a little bit higher than usual. So have a look at my CPU utilization. It's above 90, the experience is not that great, it's consumed a lot of power. Keep in mind, again, that I'm recording. This is why it impacts a little bit the uh, performance, but what I want to showcase here is that even if we lower the resolution, we would have expected to have higher frame rates and we don't have it. As far as I can see here, we have really high CPU usage with low frame rates and this is kind of unexpected. At this type of resolution, single core performance is the most important one. And here the GPU is not really utilized at all. I mean, we have 80%, 70%, 60%, but more or less the frame rates are driven by the CPU. So this is an extreme case to showcase that even if we lower the resolution, we will not have better frame rates. As you can see here, it's very choppy here. And actually, this is not because I'm recording it. I double checked it without recording and I have the same experience. So the issue is with CPU utilization, it's quite high. And because of that, the experience is not the best. As you can see here, it's way above 90 and because of that it actually is driving the frame rates and here you can see that the frame rates are really really low and compared to the previous run where we had like 90 in full HD resolution 
we had really good frame rates. So as you can see, low frame rates. So now let's look at this uh, run again, but with um, 1440p. And I will not uh, run again the benchmark, but I'll show you directly the um, test result. And you'll be surprised that it's close enough. So four times the resolution, almost the same experience. Now let's look at a new game. Here we are having DLSS enabled and everything is maxed out except uh, ray tracing. Again, I'm recording here, so because of this, uh, we have a little bit of uh, CPU bottleneck. But here, what I wanted to showcase is that even modern games, if you have run something in the background and you enable the LSS, it actually means that this game is rendered at the lower resolution. I'm not sure exactly what is the resolution in this game, but it's rendering at a lower resolution. And because of that, we don't have high frame rates. As you can see here, the, C the GPU utilization is around 57%, more or less, and CPU utilization is not that high. This is why I have a good experience. I mean, it's not choppy, it's not stuttering, but it just low frame rates. But hey, we can say that this GPU is quite efficient in the sense that it's consuming around 180 watts, more or less, and it's pushing above 100 FPS in this benchmark run. So let's look at the results here and compare it side by side with a run without DLSS enabled and ray tracing actually enabled and you'll see that actually the frame rates are not that different in the sense that we increase graphics settings and more or less we have the same average frame rates. I'm expected, right? I mean enable DLSS and you have more or less the same frame rates as before. Now let's move on to control here. As you can see you have everything maxed out and we have the same uh, resolution, I mean 1440p without DLSS enabled. Here as you can see we have good frame rates, I mean above 60, I think for this type of game it's quite good, but maybe we can have a better experience with uh, DLSS enabled. So let's see. Now I'm uh, showing you what is the graphic settings so far. I mean, I have everything maxed out and yeah, I forgot to remove grain and motion blur. I don't really like it. But here what I like in control is that when you enable the LSS, you don't have balanced quality or something. It actually showcases the resolution, internal resolution that the game is rendered. I think this resolution is more or less quality, the LSS, the LSS quality, but I'm not exactly sure. But as you can see, we have good frame rates. The game moves quite well. I can see some minor differences between uh, normal, I mean, without the LSS and the LSS enabled, but it's not that big. Also, we don't have any CPU bottleneck here. The GPU is fully utilized. Now we are lowering again the resolution by, I think this is DLSS balanced but i'm not 100 percent sure as you can see here more or less uh, the cpu utilization is around 50 percent but the gpu is actually fully utilized so this is quite good we don't have any bottlenecks here actually it's pushing the most amount of frame rate that the graphics card can push now let's see at a lower resolution so here probably it's performance says performance. As you can see, we actually have a small GPU limitation in the sense that it's not sometimes full, fully utilized. As you can see, it's around 90 some percent, 80 something. So the CPU can't push the GPU to its max. Now let's look at the lowest resolution possible in the LSS. So this one is the internal rendering is quite low and as you can see the GPU utilization is around 80% so my CPU is not powerful enough to push the graphics cards to its limit at this resolution in the sense that it's actually has some room the graphic cards had some room of improvement pushing more frame rates if we I had a more powerful CPU but do we need actually more frame rates? As you can see here, we increased a little bit the resolution, 
and you we have more or less the same frame rate and it actually looks a lot better than previously so the moral of the story is even if you increase uh, graphics car uh, graphic settings then you use DLSS uh, depending on the one that you use sometimes you don't gain much frame rates or you can actually not gain any frame rate at a certain point so this one this means that you have a limitation somewhere and when at low resolution the GPU is not fully utilized this means that the CPU can't push it to its limit so it probably is better just to keep uh, higher settings and enjoying the game at the best possible frame rate so why did I create this video so I saw on the internet that people were are saying that the Fortnite is really actually consuming a lot less than Nvidia stated uh, around 44 450 uh, watts but I believe that uh, actually Nvidia knows best because if you have a CPU that can push it to its limits and you put it at uh, 4k it will draw a lot of power as you saw previously when we use DLSS this means that the game rendered at a lower resolution than the one that we selected controllers actually can display the render resolution so this is quite good other games just uh, display balanced or performance or quality so we don't really know the internal resolution that the game is actually rendered but we just have a a selector there that we can select between those options without knowing exactly what is the internal resolution for each game controls display that and here we saw that when we used some um, uh, DLSS with lower resolution we didn't actually increase the frame rate we just stayed at the same frame rate but we just uh, had lower graphics quality and lower power usage so this is CPU bottleneck you just have lower frame rates at certain DLSS settings what is important here is that if you use DLSS or FSR this doesn't mean that you will always have higher frame rate if you use the ones that have the lower internal rendering resolution if you like the video please just click the like button and subscribe to the channel thanks and have a great day